Welcome back to Allison Customs and today I'm working on my 1972 Scout. Specifically I'm wanting to rework how we put fuel into the truck and the first part of that is putting a fuel cap into it. So originally, any of you familiar with the Scout know these things, this goes in from the back side of the quarter panel and pops out through here. You know. Um, and then you just have an external cap and there's just a rubber grommet that kind of kind of seals it to the to the quarter panel works just fine unless you've got the plastic ones and then like this one they tend to crack in the seam so there are metal versions of it I don't think anybody's repopping it so you do have to try and find one used but you know I'm still gonna have to have something similar because it does have the vent built into it and all that but we'll figure that out as we go along here. Um, next up, I got started, I apologize, somebody with a YouTube channel, you'd think they would film everything they do, but I just got started, I wasn't really planning to film it, I just was working. So, this hole that was originally in here that fits the grommet that goes with the stock filler was about 3 eighths of an inch in diameter, larger than what I wanted or what I needed to use the cap I'd like to use. And this is just one I got off, got off eBay. When I looked at it on eBay, I really did think it was a little bigger than this, but it's gonna be just fine. Um, I think it's intended for boats and hot rods and whatever. The, the thing about it, you have this little flip lever and then you turn it a little bit and then the cap pops out. And to me, it's a very aviation inspired design. This is the way when you're, fueling uh, aircraft over the wing, this is the type of cap that's on there. It's You flip up the lever, you turn it part way, the cap comes out, you fill it. Most of them have a chain on it so you can't lose their fuel cap. And uh, yeah, so, and then whenever you put it in, you always make sure that the flap is facing the direction of the wind essentially so that in theory wind couldn't come up from behind it and pop it open and they lose their cap because then you would also have a siphon effect and it would siphon the fuel out of it. And that stuff does happen on uh, aircraft that get fueled over the wing, which is really not very, uh, not a whole lot of the commercial aircraft anymore. Anyway, beside the point story. So anyway, the, the hole that was here was about three eighths of an inch. You could just barely see, three eighths of an inch too large in diameter. You could just barely see it through the screw holes in the cap. So I was gonna to have to add some material. When I would have done that, it would have put the cap to where it would have been uh, sitting on the outside of the body. And while that's perfectly functional, I was kind of like, you know, I want it to be flush. I want it to seem like it was built this way originally, right? So rather than having that, that stepped look, I decided I would figure out how to make a recessed panel um, I plan to use 16 gauge sheet metal, which is, yes, thicker than you really need. 18 gauge would be fine. So most of the metal in this truck is 51 years old. It's had rust on the inside, and even though we've cleaned a lot of that out and cleaned it all up, what I needed, or what I wanted, was enough material that when I'm welding to it, I can keep my heat on the new piece and try not to overheat the main part of the panel. So this was my test piece. What I did was just lay the cap on there, draw the circle, add about an eighth of an inch, and draw a new circle. That gave me an area for it to kind of uh, flow down in, you know, so it would fit a little better or whatever. And then I went over and on my bead roller, using some, oh, I guess these are called uh, tipping dies. And then that step is opposite on them so that you're, you're forcing the metal down between them and it puts a little lip in there. Well, that worked pretty well, except for as you can tell, that lip is very small. Um, so I got, basically, I was able to deform the metal about the thickness of the metal, 16th of an inch or so. So once I was done with that and I had traced around it pretty well, I had a nice little step, but I really wanted it a little deeper. So then I came back with a 45 degree step die, which has got a lot deeper step, as well as it's a little wider and it has that little 45 angle on it. 
So that let me make the, the panel a little deeper. And I'll kind of show you this. Again, this is my this was my practice. Kind of see the depth there and the recess on the inside. So I practiced. You can also see this has got some curvature to it. Once I cut the hole out of the middle, this would start to relax and let you, you know, form it a little bit. So once I practiced, went back, did the exact same steps again. This time I went ahead and cut my hole in it, and drew arrows on it so I would always work from the same direction. So up is that way, meaning the top of the panel. And I can put my cap in. Yeah, obviously I haven't drilled the holes for the cap itself yet. But uh, you can see now it fits nice and flush. That's where I'm at now. I've since come back in, kind of laid it out on here. I formed it by just, you know, just bending it. The curvature in the body here is kind of coming out and then over this hip that I like to call it and down. So you kind of got to get, you know, an S curve or something in it. So. That's when I opened up this hole so that I could lay this whole panel in here and be able to form the, uh, the actual piece that I want to replace. And also I started with a much bigger panel, about eight by eight. And that was so that I would have, you know, you have, you have better ability to hang on to it, run it through your, your uh, bead roller or put it on the drill press and drill a hole out of it or, you know, cut a hole out of it, whatever. Just a little easier if the panel's big. And then I cut it down, and I could obviously cut it down a hair more, but we wanna get in to make sure we have good metal everywhere. So I'm gonna leave it probably this size. And then what we're gonna do is just come in and trim a little bit of this out, clean all the, the primer and the paint and everything else that I've gotten on here off, and then we'll go ahead and weld this panel in and I'll clean up the edges on the outside here. This is pre-primed uh, 16 gauge, but it just gives us a little, uh, you know, protection on the inside, and then we'll clean a little bit of the primer off the outside, and then we'll just weld this in with a MIG, taking our time so that we don't overheat the panel.
Well, sorry for the extra noise. Just it's about 28 degrees outside today, so having to kick on the the extra heater. But anyway, um, so we got that all welded in, ground down. It's taken oh. I think I spent about an hour and a half yesterday making the panel and practicing and trying because you know you're trying to make that circle as perfect as you can and you're doing it by hand. Now I could have, I thought about it after, I could have made a die and just pressed it. Would have worked just fine, you know, and you could have used a piece of pipe or round stock or something so that you're starting with something that's already round and I've got a lathe, so it wouldn't have been that big a deal to put it in the lathe to make it exactly the right diameter. But you could, you know, you could have used anything to be close. The bead roller did just fine. You do have to be very conscious of how you're doing that to keep that hole or that step round. And then, uh, but it it worked just fine, and uh, I didn't have to make you know dies, which would have taken you know 30, 45 minutes if I even have enough round stock. The right size to have done it. Um, anyway, and then I just used a hole saw to cut out the part for where the filler goes through, and then I drilled. Uh, I drew a straight line on here that's even with the top of the bed rail here, and then lined up my screw holes. Now, interesting that the cap you can't ever get it to be completely straight backwards. Um, if you want the holes to be in a certain line. So the cap never, I, like I tried all four positions, the cap never quite lines up with one of the openings. So, you know, it worked out the way it is, but, you know, it would be nice if it was just a little better uh, product, I guess, to where it would fit. And, and look, you know, like where I could have all the screws lined up and have the handle lined up. But, uh, and then you saw the technique I used was, uh, I'll give full credit, uh, uh, Fritzy's Fabrications, Fritzy's Garage. I don't remember the actual name of his channel, but I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, anyway, so it was the cut and butt method, and I really like it. I wish I'd have thought of it, but once you see somehow somebody does something and it works really well for you, steal it. So anyway, he wouldn't show us if he didn't want us using it, right? Anyway, so that's it. The, pan, the, the cap fits nice and flush now. Um, I'm using some black number eight trim screws right here. I will probably go get some stainless steel screws put in there because these black, uh, black oxide screws, they will rust over time and run a little fuel out on them. They certainly will. So get some stainless steel ones in here. And then because of that access panel for the tube on the inside, you can reach in there and I can put nuts on it rather than just threading it into the sheet metal. But I think it looks pretty cool. Be a nice little addition there. You know, a little custom touch. That's pretty much all I have for you. This hole here is where my grandfather had his CB antenna mounted. I bought a new CB antenna mount um, that's, you know, the chrome and everything is in good shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up and mount that antenna ball because in the future I will probably put some kind of CB antenna on here just to kind of bring it back to that 80s, 70s, 80s uh, style that my grandfather had this in. So, and it didn't come with the actual antenna, but it does come with the ball mount, the spring, you know, for any of you back from the that time, that era, everybody had to have that big old spring on there. And then uh, it mounts on the, the cab here and then it's got a, a interior flange so that you can pull it all up tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mounted just so that if I need to do any modifications here, drill any holes out, put holes in a different place, whatever, I can do that and I still want to be able to keep the scout badging there so we do have to kind of keep everything in mind so we'll get the scout emblem out set it back in there and then get this mounted um, because of the this is a little bit bigger than the one he was using i can slide it down a little bit and make some room so get that done real quick well, there you have it uh, it's all on i just got a, the nuts snugged up in the back but everything lines up and 
just had to open up the original large hole and then trim out, uh, drill some new holes for the bigger flange. But overall, I think it's going to be just fine. Fits kind of what my grandfather had on here. And I did find the original. It was a little bit smaller. So guys, that's what I have for you today. You guys have a great day. We'll see you next time on Alice Kester's Project Car TV.